Can you open your mouth and give God praise for the gift of Bishop Todd Hall? Make some noise, everybody. Y'all too quiet. Make some noise. If you believe the Lord's about to speak, I dare you give God a shout of praise before he speaks. everybody I said praise the Lord everybody one more time let everything that have breath praise the Lord everybody from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the Lord's name is worthy now I'm a little jealous because I done watched y'all dance for 45 minutes. I was in the office feeling like a hostage. And I asked some of the security, when y'all gonna let me out of here? They said, oh man of God. I said, the power's in the main sanctuary. And y'all got me acting like I'm a performer waiting for my mic or something. What if Jesus comes before we preach? Holy music, Sean, go on vacation. What if Jesus comes while special preachers in the back popping grapes? Drinking Fuji, Fiji water. Waiting on 60 bodyguards to walk them in. I'm lost for words, so I will not say all that I could say, but this building is nostalgic for me. It's very nostalgic for me. You can clap. I'll tell you why in a minute. This revival has held some of the greatest deliverance services in the District of Columbia. 1993, I was asked to come by one of the greatest men that ever lived in this world, Apostle Ralphie Green, who was going to be with the Lord. Now, let me say this. If we can't thank God for the God of our fathers, because folk that don't have fathers don't go no further. Okay, when they prayed in the Bible, they said the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A lot of people don't want fathers, but without a father, you don't go any further. You are already in the oil. The gathering place has slipped into a bucket full of oil. This is a story about a man named Jed. Y'all too young, poor mountaineer could barely keep his family fed. Then one day he was shooting for some food. Up from the ground came bubbling crew. Oil, that is. Black gold. The prophecy is next. Next thing you know. Oh, Jed's a millionaire. Touch somebody and tell them, I speak that into your life tonight. I've never seen money make oil, but I've seen oil make money. Touch somebody and tell them, I'm slippery when wet, promise you. Because when you're oily, the devil can't hold on to you. Because once the oil is applied to you, it makes the devil not be able to get a grip on your life. Touch somebody and tell them whatever situation you're in, you're going to slip out of it by midnight. Now, as I'm not sealed. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that's not just in this service. That's what's in the walls of this church. I was explaining that to your pastors. I had them in the back, and yes, I've known them before they were them. 
but you have, and then I want to go back, two of the greatest, most, I think, anointed visionaries of the 21st century as your leaders, Pastor JJ, and I call her Prophetess Trina. Right in the pews where you're sitting, thousands of people have gotten out of wheelchairs. The blind eyes opened. Even the dead was raised in this church. And let me talk to 10 folk who got a big mouth. When the leader leaves, the anointing remains. Everybody's looking for mantles. It's the new thing. But if you've been to school and study it, mantles is first spelled with the letter man. Man, the word man, M-A-N. It's what a person can give to you. Another mantle is not just a piece of cloth. It's something where you put trophies and flowers on. That's a mantle. But that word is not the same word for oil. And I know a lot of people with mantles with no oil. See, this new generation, y'all just picking up nice words, dimensions, and stratospheres, and I see grace. But back in my days, the most powerful words was repent. The blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Can I hear yes, Lord, in the sanctuary? That is more powerful than Ikelebakuta Rambansopia. Because you could say all of that and still not yield. There's nothing like, yes, Lord. There are miracles in here. I, I, I'm going to preach my sermon in about 10 minutes. But can I put a scripture up? Do y'all have the capabilities of doing that? Because this is a fancy church. And I'm... Um, and I'm not used to taking orders in here. I'm used to giving them, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to acquiesce. I want you to put Psalm 133, verse 1, 2, and 3 on the screen. I want everybody to look at it. I just want to read it. It's not my sermon, but it is my salad. If you want the person next to you blessed, pause and clap for their success and do it real good. And look at them when you do that, right? Put it on the screen. They said y'all can do it and let me read it. Oh, uh, give me the King King James Version. I'm in my 60s. Give me the King James Version. Give me the one I'm more familiar with. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life evermore. Go to verse 1. I want to read 1, 2, and 3. I want to read all of them because that's the shouting verse. Let's build it. Behold how good and how pleasant. Somebody shout, yes, Lord, again. Last name, Stuart. Who's Stuart? Stand up. What's your first name? Rika, R-I-K-A. I'll be right with you. Hold on. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. I feel one of them free gospel revivals. Y'all play with me up in this. The gathering place. I'm sorry. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I got two verses left for my salad. Can I say something to you? 
Where are you from? Good. Speak loud to me because I can't hear. All right. I'm going to have you get to the aisle. I don't know whether you dance, jump or leap or whatever. Now, hold on, hold on. I want to give you something to jump for. I was up there about to read the scriptures. The Lord told me, tell her it's up to her. I'm going to work. I am going to make her worth two to five million dollars. The Lord says, the Lord said, so you don't get excited. Hold on, hold on. Bring her back. Hey, y'all know how to usher around here? This, this is how you're going to get your two to five million. I'm going to say two words. If it makes sense, run up the aisle carefully. You got nice shoes on. Walk back. Thank you. Because they don't know the rules to ushering. So I need to help you. The Lord says, I sent her this way, made her come, made her connect. Because in about the next three to five months, the world is going to go through a flip-flop in the economic uh, situation. I don't know why I'm telling that. But the Lord said, tell her, I'm going to make sure she makes her money in real estate. Are y'all with her or y'all not with her? It's, it's a little hard to my shanda. Hey, listen. Hello. Hello, all y'all over here. I'm not changing your rules, but we're going to need all the church for a praise space. Yeah, you can't stop a praise in direct traffic. They got to go where the Holy Ghost feels, so you got to let them go. All right, be seated. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let them run. Verse 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. Then verse 3 said, the dew of Hermon as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, even there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. This is what the scripture says as an appetizer. Somebody shout glory again. Glory. How many Jones do we have in here? That's a very familiar last name. Every Jones stands. Up top, I can't see, but I'm used to it here. Twin Jones? Did I hear twins? Don't worry, some of y'all laughing, but you wish it was you. Every Jones in here, one thing is happening for all of you, then I got to say something different. One thing is God says by mid next year, all, all Joneses will be debt free. The youngest twin is getting a new house again. You're moving. Now. Now, who's Jayla or Jaden? Who's? That's the one running? Oh, that's crazy. Hello. Whatever you just ran for, your name hit me like a ton of bricks. The Lord said, tell her. I am commanding that every storm she's been in to end in 10 minutes. 
God says, what has happened for the past eight years will end for the rest of your life. And everybody with a loud mouth shout yes. Pastor JJ, can I say something to you? And I'm not prophesying, but let me say something to you. We have a group of preachers now that are coming up in the earth that are highly gifted. Two, three are in here. When you know that you're not called and chosen of God to preach is when you have jealousy in your heart, right? That's when you are more of an anointed performer than you are an anointed preacher. All of the gifts, all of the administrations of the Holy Spirit is from the same God. But when one gift gets up and speaks against another gift because they don't have that gift, it then shows that you want a following, you don't want to make disciples. Right? A lot of folk do this for the views and the clicks. But we've been doing this before there was a computer. We didn't have Facebook, we had our face in the book. I want to my shantiliam. I said I wasn't going to prophesy to you, but now the Lord has kicked in. I need to say something to you. Then you can just jump chill. Now, I normally don't wear sneakers in church, but when I was getting dressed, the Lord said, he going to have on sneakers. I said, who? <laughs> Lord, don't talk to me about clothes. Never has. He said, put on your Nikes that you were saving the sport going on the plane. Came in, you walked in, I saw him. I said, God, you done blew my mind over a pair of sneakers. But the word Nike means victory. The Nike in the Greek, in the Nico, Nike means total victory. So I'm going to say something out my mouth. Based on your behavior, that thing will come to pass or it will relapse. The Lord said, tell him right now it's going to take a miracle, but I have housed him $4.2 million. The Lord said, tell him. And when one rejoice, be seated. I have about three more people to minister to, then I want to go straight to a quick word. What that salad was saying, put it back up there. What that salad was saying. And I only want 30 people to jump up when you catch it. It says, there is no oil where there is no unity. Maybe y'all miss it. He said, coming together is like the oil. He said, but them that come together must not be jealous of one another. There must be a pleasantry. So the scripture says the oil flows where there's unity and how good and pleasant it is. It said, and the oil is so thick when we come together for the right reason that it not only blesses folk at the top. It flows all the way down to the unemployed. Y'all ain't talking, flows all the way down. So I want you to say this to your neighbor and then go into a 30 second verbal hand clap, screaming praise. If they don't catch it, don't talk to them for 30 minutes. 
Somebody shout glory again. I got a blessing for somebody over here. It just hit me, but I'm shocked. I can't say the word. You're on this side. It's M-A-N-O-U-S. Who's, what is that? Uh, can you tell me what that is? No, is that your name? Oh, well, tell me how to pronounce it. I don't, Manus. Okay, I'll be right with you in a minute. So, <laughs> I'm going to have you tell your, I'm going to have you tell your neighbor this. And the other part sounds crazy. J-A-Z-I-M-I-K-A or. Okay. What I, what I, what, see most folk who talk against this gift is because they don't have it. How can somebody that don't play basketball say that LeBron can't play? Once we learn to come together pleasantly, all the oil will flow. And there we can command blessings. Some of y'all prophesying, but ain't nothing we saying coming to pass because you're prophesying to unpleasant people. So we are not false prophets. You are false recipients. See, what, what you have to do is you have to be pleasant. It's the nature of oil Then I'm going to scriptures to flow slowly um listen did you hear how much i told you sister rika was gonna be worth did you remember what i told her how much you missed it you missed it you mi just say you missed it good because young people tend to be no just say uh, -uh i missed it oh you're taking your shoes off though and i ain't said nothing yet didn't i So you're not from here? How was it when you had to leave? Terrible. Still hurting? Tell the truth. Still bothered? All right. In about 48 hours, right? All of the regrets. I also see a mic in your hand. Not just singing, but motivational speaking. Not just singing, but teaching the word of God. You ran like Jonah. Do y'all know who she is? I need you to start praying for her because she ran like Jonah. But tonight, you say, yes, Lord. The whole church, tell her. In 48 hours. Oh, I don't have to tell her. And because you said, yes, Lord, God said, you got two more moves to make. Not another state or city. God said, he's moving you into a three-bedroom condo, then to your house. Bye-bye. You can move. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to praise God for that young man. Amen. Y'all run with caution now. So after reading that, so we can go straight to the Bible and still get out at a decent hour. There was a young lady. That's her. Come here. You married? Yeah, come here. That was you dancing 40 minutes ago. And a group of people gathered around you and started dancing. And then my like nephew Riddick ran over there and started dancing. Don't answer in sentences, just one word. How's the marriage? All right. When you were dancing there, the Lord showed me bricks going up. When, when he first showed me bricks, 
I don't feel nothing. I wait till he speaks. Then he showed me a cage. I'm not saying anything. You were dancing. You bowed down. Then he showed me three sets of keys. I said, okay, I can tell her this. Everything that you and your marriage and your family have been needed has been locked up. God said it was behind three different doors. One was like a cage with chains, but God has keys for that. But one was a brick wall for, for whence there is no keys. That brick wall must be knocked down. When you was dancing, the Lord said, tell her, this will be the last time I tell her this and she needs to receive it. Tell her whatever business she names is the thing I'm going to do. Tell her I don't abide by orders or husbands having to make more than wives or wives having to push the vision of their husband. I work by who I put the vision in. And God says he will catch up to you. Stop praying about that. God says the wealth is in your belly. Y'all ain't talk. And somebody that wants to be wealthy. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. All right. So at the count of three, you're going to praise God on this note. Somebody shout glory again. There is somebody watching. We online streaming. You can get close because I keep hearing the name Dorothy Green. So I want that camera to get close on me. Are y'all watching on screen? Can y'all see who's talking and texting? All right. Tell me when Dorothy start talking to you. I need this. As a matter of fact, she's an older woman. So she ain't going to text like y'all. So she older. Dorothy Green, what I want to say to you is as God did for Hezekiah, he's going to do for you. As a matter of fact, I see platinum white hair. God says, tell you that where death would have taken you, I'm commanding death to leave you here. God says, you will raise women to be women again. They will be entrepreneurs. They will finish school. They will go back into education. They will become wonderful wives because this is your calling of God. And God said, when anyone screams for her, I'm going to put a new heart in her chest tonight. And it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You remember what I read? How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. It is like thus and so. It's like the precious oil, which means it's precious when people near you are pleasant and want you blessed. So when you say this to your neighbor, you got 30 seconds to praise God because God says within 48 hours, half of you, I wish he would have said all of us, are going to receive miracles. He says, he, no, no, he said the scripture tells you this. If anyone near you is pleasant, Holy Ghost feel and loves you, he says he's not the reason why the oil is flowing. They are. You may be seated. Get your Bibles. The Lord's not through with you. Desiree Burt. Who's Desiree? Last name B-R-T.
Have you been married or are you married? You've been married? All right, because I'm confused. Is Bert your maiden name? Married name. Because there's a check with a last name that has a V on it. What's your mate name? Varner. Now, I want to say something to you, right? It's, it's extremely... What they don't know is that eight people in your row are going to be millionaires. Now, is that, now, that's what they don't know. And that's only one is missing. Are y'all with them or y'all somewhere else? Glory to God. Sister Desiree, let me see her, please. Have you ever been into any politics? You can say no. So, what, what do you have a passion doing trying to help people? That sounds like millionaire money right there, huh? Thank God I'm a little educated. I understood what you were saying. You didn't lose me. But let me say something to you. You're going to have to get a little... Way, way back in the day, I told a young man that he would have a great ministry and business if he would submit some of his gifts to the NAACP. That's what I told him. Do you know what the NAACP is? You're a member. What do you do in there? Nothing. What was your title? Joined as a general member into something that believes in activism for the community. To help black people to strengthen your resume without being active. That's cap. That's good that you was honest that you didn't have time. I need you to not fully get active, but I need you to move. Who's the person to your left? There is over $120,000 worth of college tuition coming in your hands. And when one rejoice, because how good and how pleasant, because it's like the oil. You want some of the oil, you got to care about somebody outside of yourself. All is no good in the bottle has got to be put in another vessel to do its work. I'm sorry. I want you to make sure that when she goes that you don't force her in any direction because her life is already planned. She might help you get rich. When you see what God makes of that young lady, you're going to say, God, I thank you for all the hell you made us go through. But God says your once upon a time has just become a happily ever after. And somebody with good hands and a loud mouth use them to the glory of God. Before you sit down or before you get into the Bible, I want you to say these two words to your neighbor. If they don't get happy, don't talk to them for 10 more minutes. Because some folk are so spiritually deep that they're not in touch with humanity. When God died for the world, not for the kingdom. I know we say he died for the kingdom. No, he died for the world. 
All right, so you got to love people in the world. All right, so when I tell you say these two words, if they're prophetic at all, which this ministry has prophetic undertones everywhere. I want you to say it and then watch their behavior, then sit, get a Bible, let me give you some research and let you go. Just shout at your neighbor and tell them you're next. Now, I'm a sanctified preacher. I'm a Pentecostal preacher. Just grab somebody and say, you're next. Well, you're next. Yep, 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 yep. I'm used to this. Be seated. Get your Bibles. I promise you, God's not through. The only word stronger than the prophetic word is the written word. Let me say it again. The only word stronger than a prophetic word is the written word. Some of you are upset because he didn't call your name, but he still addressed your situation. If the bill ain't in your name, you ain't got to pay it. I'm just trying to tell you. If the person near you still looks quiet after that, get selfish, jump up, touch yourself, and shout, I'm next. The Bible, be seated. Luke chapter 8, verse 41 through 48. Oh, he's not finished. Hang in there. Luke chapter 8, because the only word stronger than the prophetic word is the written word. In the prophetic, only about 20 of you got addressed, but in the word, God speaks to all. Am I right about it? I can't even digress, but I'll tell y'all at the end, but I didn't come alone tonight. But Luke chapter 8, verse 41, familiar story. Let me give you the back backdrop. So y'all can help me cut through certain things. And I need a hundred of you out of all of you to talk to me and we'll be debt free together. But let me talk to my small group. And that's this. Everyone has heard the story of the woman with the issue of blood. If you've been in church any length of time, you have heard about this hemorrhaging woman. If you've ever heard about her, wave your hands. I have preached so many sermons around this sister whose name is unknown. And I want to say this about men and women, and I, I, I'm hoping y'all let me teach and you don't stay quiet. And that is, whenever a man sins in the Bible, the scriptures attach his name to it. David. Samson. Y'all ain't talking to me. Every man in the Bible that fell short, his name's attached to it. 
But when women sin in the Bible, like commit adultery, her name is certain. There's a certain woman. This woman bleeding from private areas. What's her name? Certain. You see how y'all don't care? Because you don't understand the best thing God did for some of you who had messed up lives is he withheld your name. Now, this is important. You don't want your mess to come out after your name is known. You want to make your mistakes while you're in obscurity. That's why I tell people who know they still got a past, stop trying to act like you're in the future. Take it slow. The whole thing about Christianity is being able to outlive something. I knew they were going to get quiet when I was preaching. But she has an issue of blood. We already know that it's from her private areas because the Bible lets us know. We also know for those who are letting me preach it that what was bleeding privately finally seeped out into the public. Right? Look up. Now, I know about five women preachers in here who are going to make a whole women's conference off of this sermon. So I already know what you're doing, but at least talk to me. All right? But everything that she's withholding private, that every woman has the right to withhold during their cycle private, you never want it to seep out into the public because it's embarrassing. But her private business went public. Now, when I say this, two people jump out of my hundred. Embarrassment comes before elevation, right? The reason why your business got out is God's about to bring you out too. You follow me? Tell somebody and tell them he's prophesying to me now. He don't have to call my name. See, I ain't calling your name. I'm talking to certain people. People who don't want their name known right now. Lord, don't change my name. Just change my circumstances. I'm good being wealthy without you knowing me. I don't want my family to know because then I might not stay wealthy long. Keep talking to that friendliest neighbor near you and tell them I'm blessed in private. And when she's hemorrhaging and it goes public, the scriptures tell you, I'm giving you the parts that you know, because the parts I'm going to scream on is coming out in about 20 minutes. But I'm just giving you the backdrop. What then happens for 10 of you who would talk is that the public sees the blood and they start screaming unclean. She's the last to get there, but there are others way in front of her who need a miracle, who's been touching Jesus, getting nothing. Like some of you tonight. You watching God speak to a neighbor in your row and ain't trying to touch him while he in that section. If he was talking to sister M-A-N-O-U-S, I'd have touched her. And I'd have been like, home girl, put in a word for me, will you? Because I know he talking to you, but let him know you got a friend. See, some of y'all think that you so special. I'm almost where I want to be. I'll stop when you say, don't respect me, tell me, get out. But catch this, and somebody else catch this. If this is the same woman that touches the hem of his garment... Her issue ceases and the Lord then takes her embarrassment and takes her to elevation by saying, who touched me? See, her issue helped her out. And then the Lord called her out. The same day she was bleeding, she becomes a featured woman in the scripture. Oh, it's quiet. Look at your neighbor. You're helping me preach. Tell him I'm going from bleeding to leading. Just go and tell him. I'm tired of leaders bleeding. Bleed and then lead. It dripped. Prophetess, Pastor Dr. Trina, I'm going to put doctor on you in a minute. 
It tripped. And when I say it, you better believe it. It, it. He said, who touched me? He said, the virtue, help me preach, left. And then he tells people where it went. He said, whoever touched me took something from me. It was the virtue to heal this particular issue. So anybody else with that issue should have not been trying to touch him. Because he told you where it went. Y'all ain't. And some of y'all would have been at a miracle, but you don't want to touch who you sit next to right now. Because you heard about their issues. You heard about their issues. Help me preach over there. You don't want to touch me because you heard about my issues. So when I first preached this, because I gave you the backdrop, I need to say one more thing, then that whole part of that sermon's over and we can get to the exciting part. And that's this for 20 of you who talk over here out of my hundred. You ready? If she wasn't bleeding, she'd have died trying to get to him. Let me say it again. If she was not bleeding, she would have died on her way to him. This side didn't talk. Let me try. I used to do this in free gospel too. So let me come on over here. If she was not bleeding, she would have died with help in her purview. Some of you know help is here and your mouth still shut. You don't want no help. You want attention. When I leave your side, that's not you not talking. You the pastor. That's these people over here. Now, let me come back. What made her get to Jesus? Then we'll go to the next praise level. Is that the crowd announced her leakage. And the rules are, if a person is bleeding in public, you must stand a certain amount of feet away. So when they allowed her issue to make them get away, it gave her direct access. So when you see people stepping out of your life, looking at you like you crazy, that's Jesus saying, come here. He can't reach you because you have too many people blocking your path. I will lift up my eyes. From which cometh my help. My help. Come on, you that have a tongue that's, that is well trained. My help cometh from the Lord. Be seated. If I would have preached anything from what I just told you, this is for 50 new people to jump and get blessed. I would have entitled this, which is not the title for the night. I'm about to get you. My cycle is over. Just look at somebody and tell them my cycle is over. That just simply means what refused to stop has to stop. I see your hope. Be seated. So I want to read from Luke. And I'm about 30 minutes from closure. Maybe 40 at the most. The reason why I'm reading the story from Luke, which is also in Matthew, which is also in Mark, that John refused to pin is because Luke, I need some scholars now, is not a disciple, he's a professional. I'm glad some of y'all can finally learn how to preach in a professional way. But now I need God to put his word in some professional. Because some of you that are preaching ain't got a profession outside of that. I 
I need somebody with a profession that can help me and at the same time show me the way. What if I don't want to be a preacher? Everybody don't want to be no prophet. Please, you better hear what I tell you. Everybody don't want to be no first lady. I was made for a pastor. That ain't in no scripture. To be a real pastor's wife and stay at an anointed church, that woman got to be a thug, a psychologist, an attorney. That lady. You see how quiet y'all are now? She got to treat you nice when she want to slap you in your face for DMing her husband. It's a lot of work. So why not just get saved and get a job? Why not see that God does not need you to be a disciple to have your own book in the Bible? Why not recognize that your skill is just as important as anyone else? Yep, I knew I was going to lose 80% of you because you upset because 80% of you believe you called to preach. And I ain't going to knock it because many are called. You can be called to do this, but you got to be chosen to keep doing it. I want you to go to chapter 8, verse 43 only. Verse 42 and 43, then we go into Matthew and Mark. Then I'm just going to holler, let y'all go, get on my flight, go back home, go to a birthday party, get up on Sunday and preach to my stubborn church. Now. Luke 8, verse 42, for he had only one daughter about 12 years of age, and she lay there lying, but as he went, the people thronged him. He was going to somebody else's house to heal a daughter who was 12 years old. I'm going to see who jumps as a woman. But there was a woman with an issue of blood who had a cycle as old as his daughter, right? Y'all are missing his daughter is 12 years old because she exits her mother's womb and then she grows and matriculates to at least be 12. Now she's expiring. But this woman has a disease in her that's still in there growing for 12 years. It should have killed her because nothing should a woman carry past her term. Y'all ain't... All right, y'all missing it. Men and women, have you ever gone through something so long? You say, I don't know how I'm making it, man. I... Man, I, I need to go back to selling. I need to go back to doing something. Y'all forgot y'all in Coral Hills. Y'all forgot the police is watching y'all cars for you. Did you forget the bus still stops right there? Jesus had two choices. Keep going to the preacher's house, which was Jairus, and deal with the preacher. The reason why this woman gets a miracle is she didn't wait for him to finish his first appointment. She said, if he is who he is, if he runs out of power, I guess I'm going to get it and the little girl won't. Sometime to get a miracle, you got to be selfish. Because some of y'all would have been rich, but you gave all your money to other people because, see, I ain't got no help. And they promised to pay you back during tax season. Verse 43, woman having an issue of blood. 12 years past the green, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. I'm done with this scripture. Uh, 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 came from behind, verse 44, came from behind, touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunch. Now, remember that in your psyche, because I'm coming for you in a minute. But let me also go back and say this to you. She spent her money on physicians. The reason why the word physician is in there because it's a physician writing it. So he lets us know 
his profession could not do this job. Miracles are only available when professionalism runs out. Y'all not talking anymore, but I'll be with you. You can't just get lazy and wait on the miracle. You have to exhaust your resources. If one bank say no, go to a second. Bank of America say no, go over the truest. Truest say no, go over to Wells Fargo. When you run out of banks, when you've tried everything and everything has failed, that's when you try Jesus. But you can't go to Jesus on the second no. You have to exhaust. Hey Amen. That's your wife. I want you to run for your new house. You're moving again. I'll be back with you. And listen, Pastor JJ, the reason why he's getting it is the bank said no, 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 no. Look at y'all. Prophet Hall, you weren't there, but the one speaking through me, he was there. Be seated. We're almost to the end. I enjoyed all of my sisters, Dr. Medina and Dr. Barbara Calloway. I enjoyed all my sisters, but here we go. 12 years. The Bible said she spent, y'all got to watch it. She spent, you, the hundred of you that's with me, talk to me. No, not all of you. My real hundred people. She had spent all her living on doctors. One virgin said, all her money. I want to give a topic first, in case I never finish. Let me give this topic and see if 50 out of my 100 would jump. Look at your neighbor and say, it's my money, my issue, and my miracle. Go on and tell them, it's my money. It's my issue, and now it's my money. If you catch it, you will scream, and that's this. Money comes last. God has to make sure that what you're asking for, if it's money, never takes his place. It's coming, but it comes last. About time you get your money for two folk, forget a hundred. About time you get your money, your other stuff will already been paid off. Now look at you. Well, what we need the money for? For your children's children. The actual miracle of money is never for the recipient. You're paying a price for a new generation. High five somebody and tell him he's right on my road. He's right on my road now. Go to Mark chapter 5. Go to verse 25, 26, 27. Then when I hit my final scripture in Matthew, I'll be excited. Mm-hmm. Somebody say, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Verse 25, a certain woman told you no name, which had an issue of blood 12 years, suffered many things by many physicians, and had spent, they're not with me, all she had. Mark gets a little more in depth, that I paid folk who's, who are supposed to make me feel better, but it said nothing got better, Y'all, it just grew worse. But when she had heard of Jesus, y'all miss your cue. I'm going to call that name one more time. You hear me? If you scream more over money and marriage than you do the creator of all things, when she had heard, you may not believe it, 
That's how your bills get paid. When prices go up, prices come down. Right? Most folk want help without asking. And they won't ask because the helper may want details. And they don't want to be embarrassed knowing that embarrassment leads to elevation. Suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, was nothing better, but rather grew worse. But when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind, touched his garment. I'll stop there. Uh, let's go to Matthew. Chapter 9, verse 19 through 22. Then I'm about to put the pie in the oven. And we'll cut a few slices in a few minutes. It's an apple pie. It's easier to cook. It's apple pie. People that don't smile don't ever need to get married. I'm telling you. Serious people are meant to be single. Somebody in the marriage has to know how to crack a joke. We broke, but God is good. Somebody got to know how to do that. We getting evicted next week, baby. Where are we going? You need somebody. Two serious people should not get together now. If the doctor say that I'm dying of any affliction... If I was married, I want my wife to say, ha ha, not him. Ain't no baby, you dying. Baby, I'm dying. No, I need her to be like, baby, listen. Mm -mm. You don't need anyone in your life confirming the bad that you already know. Matthew chapter 9 verse 19 Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples I'm about to bring it to a crux Sean behold a woman which was diseased see Matthew gets deeper diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem now I did something that you forgot over 45 minutes ago the first person that jumped will get a miracle but you got to hear it first and that's this this that she's getting is located in the hem of his garment like the oil that flows from the beard down to the skirt y'all stay with me Be seated. We're almost there. I got a hundred of you too. Down the hem of his. Now, Dr. Martin, Bishop Martin, let me say this for all of you preachers and all of you pontificators and you that are orators weekly get to pour into the lives of others. The reason why that word beard is so important, and I'm going to see if Bishop J.J., Pastor, Lord, I said if Pastor J.J., will come high five me on this and I need the high five. Some of you are following leadership, hear me, that is anointed, but the oil has nothing to attach itself to to get to you. Right? See, I just lost. Half. What is he talking about? The scripture that I read you, in order for it to get down to the skirt of the garment, it needed a traveling beard. Hold on. And it mentions Aaron's beard, which is a priest. The reason why the beard is featured and not the oil right now for Temple who will jump is the length of the beard lets you know how mature the man is. So when you're following immature anointed people, This woman.
woman does not keep your Bibles open. We're on my last verses and I'll be in the F. For she said, this, this, this woman, uh, 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 Bishop Lewis, y'all going to get with me or go against me, is not healed because she touched his garment. That is not the scripture. Shoot me. I take your bullet. See, that's the difference in preachers with a beard and preachers without. Is they repeat what they've heard all their life instead of reading the scriptures for themselves. Son, she did not get healed. I know they up there like he out of here. Because she touched his, the hem of his garment. Will y'all give me a break and hear my story? I hear y'all. But preacher, the Bible, all the scriptures said she got healed after she touched him of his garment. I didn't disagree with that. I said she didn't get healed because she touched that garment. I agree. I'm, I'm through with y'all. I agree that she got healed after touching. The healing was not in the garment. Stop. Now, Bishop, Pastor, Doctor, when I say this, run and high five me again. I'm going to make it simple. Then I got to find somewhere else to hoop. But I'm going to tell them where the healing was because they're paralyzed in anger and things. She's not healed from the garment having the healing. She don't move. She is the reason why the healing is in the garment. The healing wasn't in the garment before she got there. Everybody was touching them. Prophet Hall, we hear you. We've heard a little bit about you. Some of us are very unfamiliar with you. But we need scripture because our pastors preach scripture. And I know it because I watch them. So let me, let me show you that she's the reason why the healing's in the garment. And if y'all scream on this, we three quarters there. You ready? Next verse says, for she said within herself. touch his garment see the other chapters didn't say what she said they just told you where it was but Matthew being a CPA oh yeah being thorough in details he said y'all left out something yeah she got healed when she touched the garment but she couldn't touch it till she said it. Yes, sir. Uh -oh. Now, if I say this and you scream, you there. And the Lord was honoring the words that she said on the inside. She's speaking from the inside because the issue is on the inside. You got to learn to tell what's in you to tell what's growing in you. It's time for you to get out of here. I wish I had old school people. Something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a 
chain. Mm -hmm. Oh, now y'all like me again, huh? Because you didn't give me a fair chance. That I'm about to speak a word of exhortation to about 500 of you. That if you don't scream over five seconds, you won't get it. God says, before you go to bed tonight, think about this. Make sure every thought is good because I'm doing what's on your mind. Y'all ready? Because once you speak it out your mouth, you give the enemy a chance to devise a plan. The Holy Ghost knows the thoughts and the intention. Before you ask, God said, I already heard you. It sometimes it does not have to come out of your mouth. The praise that's coming out of your mouth is a response of what you're saying about what God is doing. So when people see you out of nowhere, hey, what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong. Everything just got right. When I think of the goodness, 10 minutes of Jesus and all that he's done for me, Y'all finish it. I thank God. Three things and then I'm finished. For she said... If I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be not cured. The word whole, Greek, sozo, Greek meaning for 10 of you will scream, means whatever I do for you is permanent. When you read the word whole, that means there's no room for anything else. So God said, all of you that's ever been broke, you'll be broke no more. All of you that's been sick, you will be sick no more. Look at some of you. Everybody gets sick. The Bible said, and the Egyptians you see today. You will see them no more forever. So yes, there's a place in your walk with God where you can be in a blessed posture forever. <sighs> that was my Noel Jones move. <sighs> go back to Mark chapter 5 and go to verse uh, uh, 28. And I'll be getting to the crux of my last two points at 9.28. Uh, it, it says, let's go to uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 28. Ooh, ooh. For she said, y'all are missing out on how it all happened. She said. Some of you can't get blessed because you hold everything in. And that leads to a nervous breakdown, prison, domestic violence. There are some things you can't let grow. I'll stay over here now because y'all didn't move. Because black women hold everything until they kill somebody. Some things you got to stop carrying. And you got to stop changing all your misery into a ministry. Have a joyful ministry. Why you got to find your ministry after you get hurt? For she said, if I may touch but his clothes. Who's wearing these clothes? Y'all say Jesus, please. Jesus. Say that name with pride. Jesus. That's the way bills get paid. I'm telling you now, listen. She's touching the hem of whose clothes? Jesus. 
All right, when I say this, she's not touching the H-I-M, she's touching the H-E-M. Y'all understand, don't you? So when I say this from Psalm 133 and you missed it, verse 1, and 10 of you don't move, you'll probably see debt for five more years. But you who catch it, you'll never see it again. And that's this. If the person near you wants you blessed and loves you, and they're in touch with Jesus, when you touch them, that's his material. What I'm trying to tell you. I don't have to touch him. Just give me some material. And where there's two or three gathered together in my name, touching. God said, there am I. You want to find me? It's in who you touch. She didn't say if I would touch him, H-I-M is not present. She meant his clothes, his material. And some of you that have gone to school, Scream on this, then let's go to some shouting stuff. But third, if you catch this quick, when you touch somebody and you get a miracle after you've been in their presence, let the devil and all your haters know, I got a material witness. Y'all ain't got a material witness. Tell them, wasn't, wasn't you there when I was sick? Wasn't you there when I lost my car? Wasn't you there when I didn't put no money down? You need a material the reason why now Dr. J.J., this your church, I need you to come in and high-five me again because every time we're touching each other, you don't know what I'm really transferring. I'm doing this on purpose, right? But I want to say this to you. The devil's biggest job that made the church lose so many members, never come back. Church ain't been the same since COVID. Okay? I don't believe COVID was a demonic thing. I believe it was a plague. I believe God allowed it. I believe God employed it. But what I don't like is that the church played by the rules of COVID, which then took Jesus and miracles out of the equation. Because COVID said we couldn't touch each other. We couldn't be in each other's company. We had to stay home. Y'all missing where I'm going. So if that was true, where does the scripture, they shall lay hands upon the sick. You know why there were so many deaths, 7 million deaths? Is there were 7 million scared pastors that refused to come outside and lay hands. Moses touched his, his sister Miriam who was a leper but never had leprosy. Why didn't let's go to church? Why didn't he catch leprosy? Are y'all asking me? I know y'all didn't fly all the way from Orlando to just look at me. You remember when he met him? He did two things, and I'm prophesying to you. I took a detour to give you a prophetic word through the scripture because you're going to have a church where no one can fit in. But hear me. You do understand that when he met Moses as a leader, Moses had no followers. He was already a leader because that's what God called him was a leader with no followers. God had him in leadership training for two things. You ready? One, he says, what is that in thy hand? It is a rod. It's a staff. Put it on the floor. There's a serpent. Pick it up. He wouldn't pick it up. God told him, pick it up by the tail. He had to find instructions on how to handle serpents. Now, let me tell you this. (laughs) 
So let me tell you how to handle your next level of church where you have no room and need real help and you just can't help it. Catch this and they'll jump for you. A staff out of hand is a snake. When you get a real staff, thy rod and staff shall comfort thee. But let me come back. Number two. Whatever God sends in your ministry, whatever kind of disease or problem they have, from crack to pedophilia, you got power over if you're the leader. He never sends in your church what you don't have a cure for. Stop. Pastors who put folk out, it's because they can't help them out. But let me catch you, capture you. He told Moses, Moses never heard of leprosy. There was no leprosy until Miriam. We never had a name for it till Aaron named it. The Bible said, he told Moses one day, put thy hand in thy bosom. Boom, pull it out. It was white as snow. Moses got afraid because he got something that he could not control. God said, put it back in thy bosom. Boom, and it came back like a baby's bottom. So many years later, when his sister gets leprosy, Moses don't want to touch it. God tells him, everybody else can't, but do you remember, I gave you power over that when we were talking. I told you, put your hands in your bosom. Pull it out, it was white and it went back. Now let her touch her with that same hand and let her skin return. Some of y'all don't want to touch Jesus' material because you don't like how it first looks. But if you could see what's going on behind the scene, and that is who I am today, I will not be tomorrow. And if you don't touch me while I'm broke, don't approach me when I'm rich. I need you to understand. I need you to compliment the first version of me before I become Todd Hall 2.0. Now, we're about to go to church. I got two things to say. And thank you for your patience. Number one is this. And this is where I want 10 folk to talk loud. Pastor JJ, catch this again. Was this woman hemorrhaging? Or was her money hemorrhaging? I'm about to go to church without you. Because it seems like whatever's happening to her body is taking cash out her pocket. Yeah. 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 I wanted to stay over there because the pastor's over there, but y'all gonna hang out with me just a little while. No. That's how quick it is to lose a miracle, that fast. It could be in your face, holding a conversation with you. Let me see him now, now, listen to me. Was she hemorrhaging or her money? I'm gonna flip it because we know she got a miracle. I'm about to flip this sermon so hard to show you where your 4.2 is and everybody else blessing. Ready? You that want to remain broke and you have to be broke, be seated. The Negroes who were sitting just stood up. They said, hold on. Y'all can sit. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Is she hemorrhaging or is the money hemorrhaging? For every bucket of blood that she needs a transfusion for, she has to pull money out of her pockets because what she has, they have no cure. So she has to go to a pseudo specialist who has persuaded her we may have a new drug oh yeah we cannot guarantee it's costly oh. but how bad do you want to live 
I don't want to live free of symptoms. I want to live free of the disease. Yes, Because the medicine takes away the symptoms. It never produces a cure. The cure is in he was wounded. Boy, he going to bless y'all. For our transgressions bruised. I'm quoting scripture. For our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripes. The cure is they hung him high. They stretched him wide. I feel Jesus. He hung his head. Y'all, for me, he died. Let me hear that E flat. E flat, that's love. But for 10 folk who go further, that's not how. The story ends. But three days later, he rose again. That's love. We're going to church now in three minutes because I'm a Pentecostal preacher. Catch this now. Which one is bleeding and which one is leading? I'm going to cut through the chase because my holler is in there and I know I ain't got too much more teaching left because I feel excited about the text. 500 of you catch this and then scream. It is a serious thing when the text reveals how she got to Jesus. You said crawling. No, that was her posture. That's not her how. That's a, Cause sometimes God has to break you all the way down. I've been there. You ever been there? Between the rock and the hard place? You and I have been in the same place except we did two different things. You spoke more about the hard place and I spoke to the rock. You still talking about how broke you are. I'm talking about how blessed I'm going to be. Blessed in the city. Y'all know the song. Was she bleeding or hemorrhaging from her body or was her money hemorrhaging? What led her to Jesus? She crawled, but that's a posture. But what escorted her to Jesus? Let me hear that E flat again. Boy, you better get up off me. What escorted her? What escorted her to Jesus? When I say this, half of you will not scream, but the half that will, you'll understand it within three minutes and watch what happens to your life. Can I tell you what escorted her to Jesus? Broke. When she has spent. She don't start heading towards Jesus. Until she's broke. And if I say this and you miss it, you ain't going to catch it. She ran out of money, but not out of blood. What can wash away Just touch somebody and tell them I've ran out of a lot of things but I've not run out of the blood Come on Zion Come on gathering place 
Come on, 1403. Grab somebody by the hand. That's Jesus material. And say, oh, neighbor. I've ran out of a lot of things. But I have not run out of the blood. And it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from death. You hold in the right hand. But let me talk to you. And let me tell you this. Every bad thing. Every negative thing. Every difficult thing. That's been against you. It's got to stop now. Because I know a man. From Galilee. the hem of his garment. That's me. That's me. Walk closer. He come a shonda. God 
is going to save your entire family. All who serve another God shall bow at the feet of Jesus. And God said, you will see this before your eyes close. For you are highly favored, saith the Lord. And I command healing. Shama. You ought to say yes. You ought to say yes. Grab somebody and say, oh, yeah.
can't stand it. Listen to me. Let me see the pastor. Pastor, stay there, man. This is your church. Broke. I'm closing now. Broke escorted her to Jesus. When she got there, Jesus cures her completely. Watch now. Listen. Shabranda forever, right? You can make money back. But the reason why she stopped bleeding, and I hope somebody catch this in the spirit for those who want to be wealthy and become business owners and know that the government is tricking us with the money thing. 50, you scream on this. It was as simple as this. She was on the longest cycle of her life. Hold on. It started off legal. But when it stays too long, it's now illegal. You knew it was her menstruation because women who know their bodies knows when it stops and when it stops. So she felt in her body that it was over. This is where you and I can high five and you should scream. People will still be jealous of you and I and others when we make it to the next level. You know why? Ask me why. Why? When I say this, only real folks scream. Because the blood on the dress is fresh, but the situation is old. See the blood? When it stopped, there was no proof. The only way you would know proof is I would have to let you into my private space. Which now you got to pay for that. God's going to give you your money back because of how many people invaded your privacy. He's paying you for surviving it. For not doing the stuff you wanted to really do to them. God said, when you see the size of the next check that I sent into your life, you're going to thank every hater for everything they did to you. And I'm proving it. He told Joe, pray for your enemies. He said, and for your friends. And he said, and those who want to be friends, charge them a piece of money. I can pray for you and not hang with you. I can forgive you and still forget you. But if you want to get close, you got to pay the toll. Y'all ain't talking. Your next level of yourself is not free. Look at some of the other folk who didn't scream because you've been mooching, leeching, being parasites. Your Mashande, we're about to close. Your next level cannot be free. If they don't pay money, tell them pay attention. If you can't listen to me, you can't learn from me. My new gift in my age is I'm easy to let you go. Because we've come this far by faith. Talk to me, children of God. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Can't turn around. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God right now, and that's the material. You will never know this. I prophesied everything that you and your wife was going to go through for the past eight years to my son. To this very day, every year. I said, this is about to happen. It happened. I said, the last thing happened. I said, this is about to happen. He said, no way. It happened. I said, man, that man is going through what he went through because God wants to show him his issues are being resolved. You were bleeding. And that bleeding sometimes was aiming at your money. 
I came to tell you that the bleeding stops and the money comes back. Y'all ain't talking. You will not be using your ministry money to fund this ministry right here. God's about to make entrepreneurs and millionaires out of your people. Because when you crawled, they crawled. When you walked, they walked. When you ran, they ran. When they ran out, they stayed. I came to tell you and your church that y'all have just survived the cycle of broke. Wealth does not just come in money. It comes in relationships. It comes in good health. Y'all talking. And I wish above all that ye may prosper. And be in health. But that's even as your soul. And the soul prospers by the word that you feed them. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. If they had money in that hand for you, you would hold it a little tighter. This is the last time you touching their struggling side. Look at me. I'm leaning. I'm a little old, so let me get these words out. I'm leaning and depending on Jesus. Your mama used to sing this. Every step of the way, Lord, if I stumble, give me more grace. Every step of the way. Let me quote those lyrics again because they're prophetic in its content. I'm leaning and depending on Jesus. Every step of the way Lord if I stumble give me more grace every step of the way I heard a word of exhortation from the Lord then we'll give and you can have the mic but I want to see if 200 people scream holler and jump like you should the Lord says the reason why I called this the gathering place is they're about to gather all that they need God says gather Hold that hand for the last time. You're holding the hand of a new homeowner whose credit is 800, 820, 830, 840, 850. We have not because we ask not. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. No higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Wish I had more time to spend with y'all, but the time will come now. Whoever's hand you hold, don't let it go for at least a minute or two. Because they need your material. If you're touching another worshiper, you're halfway there, period. You touching that quiet person, you probably still on the ground. Quiet people are sneaky, all of them. I don't trust them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 